Arms up. Does it feel comfortable? Yeah. Oh, smells bitch. terrible. I do? At least. Oh, they're all clean. How do they feel? Good. They look good. Yeah. How are we doing today, Ma? Are you doing good? I'm good. How are you? Oh, great. You gonna catch? Yeah. Right? I got my own pads, though. Like... You do? Yeah. They're, no, they're, they're not there. Where are they? Uh, uh my car. Go get them. Uh, you know, that's a long walk. Good arms up. Cool. Feels comfortable? Yeah, it feels good. Okay. I'm gonna need this. This is all I need. Right, but you also wanna make sure you're gonna be protected, right? Ah, these enough. These are a little tight. Are these XLs, Mario? Actually, you know what, Nick? These are alright. Yeah, I don't think you're gonna be an XL. You jam? <laughs> don't jam me. <laughs> Feels okay? Yeah. Yeah, they look pretty good. Yeah, they look Let's good. go, baby. Okay, we're The Seton Hall Prep Pirates have officially begun training camp where they have four long weeks to prepare for the 2021 season. But for head coach Bill Fitzgerald, time is of the absolute essence as he knows that the Pirates have an even longer way to go before they reach their ultimate goal. Expectations are, are getting higher. We've had uh, some success. We've had some big wins, um, you know, over the last three years. When you have your quarterback back and you have your receivers back and you know, some guys on, on defense back that have made plays, expectations are going to get higher, and uh, that's where they should be. They should get higher. Um, it's up to us to, to answer the challenge as a staff and, and, and as a team. You know, we don't talk about uh, how many games we're going to win. We don't talk about, uh, you know, that we're going to win a championship, we talk about that we're going to compete for those things um, and focus on the process and not the, out not the outcome. The Pirates will play some of the state's finest competition this season in the Super Football Conference. Before they look ahead to any games on the field, Bill Fitzgerald, his staff, and the entire roster of over 80 student athletes know they need to remain focused on the process. Everything that we do here goes back to these three goals. You may get tired of me saying this, okay, but you need to understand what we do goes back to this. The number one goal is to be leaders in the community and the school. We want you to get out in front, not just here, all right, but we'll talk about here in a little bit, all right, in the school and the community. Uh, the second goal is to have the highest team GPA in the school. Tough. Tough. We're up against the eight ball. We have the biggest margin for error because we have the most amount of guys. Okay? People think football players are dumb. That ain't true. We have a, a 3.87 team GPA uh, after last year. And our senior class, uh, the 20 plus seniors, that over a 4.0 GPA for that class. Uh, so that's something I'm very proud of. And then the last goal is to compete relentlessly for championships. Process driven. Okay, scoreboard outcome. I'm interested in process. Um, and every, every decision that we make in the program is based upon one of those three goals. For Seton Hall Prep, the process begins way before the start of training camp in August. For strength and conditioning coach Max Ruiz, the process begins as soon as the last season ends. When I took the job, you know, I had a, a, a plan for uh, the off-season program and uh, the administration said you know we have a strength coach and I said I understand that but you know I put this plan together this is I've been thinking about this for many many years and they say you know just give him a chance you know go to one workout and then you uh, and then you know then we can have another conversation about it and within 15 minutes I knew the strength program was off my plate
with that, we want to build team chemistry. You know, so one way of doing that is just getting these guys together consistently, giving them hard workouts where they got to push through and they got to do it together. Players have gotten bigger, faster, stronger. That's always the goal that's going to translate to the field. When you walk into our weight room and see a lift, you can expect music to be loud, you can expect coaches to be coaching, and you could expect players to be getting after it. I mean, this offseason's probably been the best that I've been a part of. Probably the best we've had since I've been here. He's detailed, he prepares, he has numbers ready. Um, it's calculated, we write all our numbers down. Setting expectations for weights and uh, how much weight we need to put on that offseason. He has the right workouts, he knows exactly what you need to do. We're running on the track at 6.30 in the morning, then we're going in the lift. My bench went up about 75 pounds since like January. You know, the weights that are that we're, you know, lifting uh, by, you know, summer is just, you know, it's insane. Uh, you know, sometimes it gets on you, but obviously it's for a good reason. I feel it's team chemistry for all of us, you know, young guys coming in, we don't really know. We all get to like build that bond that you need on the field. None of us wouldn't be anywhere near where we are right now without him. The kids love him, and most importantly, they trust him. I mean, the culture is, is really created January through June uh, in the weight room, and he is uh, the biggest reason for that. When the weights get tough, trust your trainer. Right on three, one, two, three, right. Right. We're doing this for you, son. We're doing this for you. 100 guys are doing this for you. Nice and tight, elbow tight, elbow tight, elbow tight, elbow tight. Fellas, uppercut, uppercut, and then lift. Uppercut, and then lift. Here we go. Side to go. Go. Oh, yeah. We're almost there. Hey, let's get everybody now. We're almost there, man. The gains from the offseason must translate onto the field for them to compete at the level they want to play at. Nice. There you go. There you go. Perhaps most especially, for assistant coach Tom Filato and his offensive line. Not bad, not bad. Fellas, fellas, work on that strain now, work on it. Ah! One of the neat things about working with the offensive line is that they are a group of workers. Uh, they have great attitudes. These guys come to work every day. They're eager to learn. They practice hard, um, and um, you know they care. And in my opinion, if you care, uh, you have a chance. Uh, I'd probably say my favorite coach, Coach Villano. He uh, he's like a dad to me. He's like a mentor. He really teaches me about like not just football but like life skills too and I really enjoy that. Uh, I definitely think we have the best coaching staff in the state because not just because of how they know the game, it's because of our relationship with the coaching staff. They're like family to all of us. They're, they're really close with us, they connect with us. I have to say uh, I'm very happy being here. I love to come to work, I love to work with these kids, I love to work with the staff here uh, both on the team and in the uh, and in the school. It is a great place. That's pretty darn good, man. Pretty darn good. Okay, here we go. Before when I was behind you, that knee was way out. That time it wasn't. So work on keeping that knee. And here we go, guys. I've been in a couple of places where uh, it has been a um, career-changing uh, experience. You know, first, I was fortunate enough uh, to be with the New York Giants for 10 years. And uh, it wasn't that I was so wonderful, it was that uh, Bill Parcells, uh, head coach, and my head coach in high school were both the same guy. But I stayed there 10 years, and I learned. And the guys on the staff were guys like Bill Belichick, Tom Coughlin, Romeo Cornell, uh, Ron Earhart. I mean, there was some some of the giants, uh, <laughs> no pun intended, uh, of um, you know of the game. Uh, but I learned, and it kind of set me on my on my path. Christian is now coming this way. You've got to give a lot. Let me tell you, you've got to give a lot. Yep. Now, even if Nah, gut stays out. Oh. I'm the real 74. 
the punches at the same time though. Huh? Don't, don't they want the punch staggered? One and then two? Yeah, but you don't want to make it that slow. Like yeah, but you were just... The power unit is just really important to all of us. We've been training and working so hard for the past four years, ready to get on the field together, and this is our time to finally get on the field together and just show what we can do. Here we go! The offensive line is, in my opinion, the most important uh, position. The guys up front is where it starts. Sorry, go! Stupid questions now. Huh? I don't ask stupid questions. Let's go, step up. I'm really excited to get on the field with these boys and have a great season. Uh, just looking to dominate and don't let no one pass and just keep doing what we've been taught. And we're very excited to show what we got. I just I just actually got done telling them. Uh, I believe all of them can play. Uh, it's a matter of when, not if and uh, we want to accelerate their development so when coach calls upon them to play, they're ready to go. And that's our job, is to get them ready to play. The unit will be responsible for paving the way up front as the Pirates offense returns a magnitude of seniors who by now are quite familiar with Bill Fitzgerald and his system. Right now, these guys only have a few more months then they're gonna be turning their equipment in. Um, so the, the pressure is on them, uh, they know that, they like that, and we'll go as far as they take us. Coach Fitz is the guy, you know, just, just the guy. There's a lot I can say about Coach Fitz. Max, stop pounding run over there. I don't want to hear it. Always gets after it. The guy's crazy. Uh, I love him. What a funny guy. He's, uh, he definitely has some interesting things to say on the field and off the field. Hey, you going to the movies? Yeah. Oh, then why are you picking your seat? Picking my what? Your seat. What do you mean? Oh, I got a wedgie. <laughs> also, one of the smartest offensive minds I've met. He's been around the game for a while. His play calling, I'd say, is his, his best trait. At the end of the day, he knows exactly what he's doing, and he gets the job done. He has a great offense, and I've never really seen it fail, and I'm just very excited to working it and playing it this year. You know, I feel like we have great depth uh, in the skill positions on offense, um, and we have a chance to be, be really dynamic there. It's important that we still focus on the details and, and the fundamentals, and not worry about so much about plays, but, but about you know, making the play when it's there for us to make. Following in uh, Don Busby and Jack Larson's footsteps, two great guys. Uh, looking to just uh, fill that role and play as best as I can out there. I try to do whatever I can to help the team. It doesn't matter what that is. That's always been my role. Get a wide split too, so you can open yourself up. I want to get a wide split. Yeah, it's like we read the same line. But learning from the older guys have been, it's helped me out a lot, I think, in the receiver room. Donovan, McAteer, they're really helping me out. Once you get around the corner, there's no one behind them, yeah. except for that guy who's in that deep half, and you can just sit right there. Because if you sit right there. I Nicky Glaze would He out. did, he did, he did. Because he was really good at that. Shot Nicky Glaze. And, and, and my philosophy is the best, the best people will play, whether they're a senior or a freshman. Um, so I think it's important that, that our young guys know that so they don't wait. To, to make a play or they don't they don't wait to jump up to the forefront because we need we need everybody uh, moving in the same direction playing the best that they possibly can competing at the highest level that they can that'll make the entire team better that'll make them better and uh, if we have uh, you know tough conversations about um, you know positions and, and playing time well that's a good thing to have um, because that means uh, you know we got a, a bunch of good players vying for the same spot. Your cut was sharp, but we want it to be one, two, it's six, right? The third, the third inside step. One, two, three, bang! Right, right. One, two, three. You got to get over the top of me, unless, unless I blow out of there. Good, good, Danny. Perhaps most tied to the Pirates' success on offense is the return of three seniors who took the field long before their time at Seton Hall Prep. Jaden Craig, Nick Dunneman, and Miles Thomason have been playing together long enough to forget exactly where it all started. 
Yeah, that was like second grade. Like we were playing like second grade. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. third, third grade. So he was quarterback when I was. Third grade. Yeah. And then he left fifth. And yeah, no, because fourth six. grade I was yeah. DN. I remember that. <laughs> and wide receiver? Yeah, <laughs> Jadavion Clowney. Jerry. As soon as I moved the quarterback and moved the receiver, that's when we started winning. It's fair to say that the Pirates are happy with Jaden Craig's decision to switch to quarterback. The Harvard commit possesses the acumen, arm strength, and athleticism to run Coach Fitzgerald's system. This offseason he was sending me plays, videos on Twitter, you know, asking me if I could do certain things, and it's, that's the kind of relationship we have, and he's just putting a lot of trust in me this year. Oh my, that's a dot. Anchoring the backfield is returning starter Miles Thomas. Miles is a dual threat back who can find the end zone anytime he touches the ball. Touchdown. He'd be on my highlight tape. <laughs> and I might tag you. In the, in the day and age right now, I might tag you on Instagram. <laughs> I think the running back room is one of the most talented we've had we've had in a while. Having three senior backs and a lot of us have experience in all different body types and all different playing styles, I think we can really do a lot. And we've got a great passing game, but I think the running game is something we can also lean on this season. Look forward to it. Ah, oh, the move, Miles. I feel like we bounce off each other. We yeah. play each other's game. We know yeah, how we're going to be. I always know, like, know, like, know where he wants me to be yeah, when exactly. I'm catching the ball. Yeah, yeah. Any type, whenever I'm scrambling, the first person I see is Nick. Senior receiver Nick Dunneman isn't a man of many words. You're not going to get I'm not going to say nothing. I'm going to just watch my TikTok and peace. He prefers to let his play on the field do most of the talking for him. We just, we want to score every possession that we get. We want to make it easier for the defense. Let's be perfect today, let's be perfect. It's just crazy to like, think that this is really our last season playing together. Like, it's really my guys. Like, they didn't throw me the ball for almost half my whole life. I think we got the best chemistry in New Jersey, just the three of us. In the past years, we've had um, a couple of upsets, but I don't really want those to be upsets. Like, I want that to become the standard for seeing our prep. I want us to be one of those top teams that people talk about when they talk about the best teams in Jersey. The way that you're in a meeting here for an hour on how to play our defense, the way that the offensive line met and asked questions, the way you prepare, not for the game, but for practice, right? And then how you compete, that is the process, right? That is the process. The way you act, the way you prepare, the way you compete. Okay? And that's something that just doesn't happen June 21st or August 2nd or August 28th, but it happens back in January. Or it happens back in your freshman year. Okay? That's our standard. Better yet, like I said before, it's your standard. 